Welcome to Discovering. It's March. The snow is melting, but we'll probably get more. The temperature is rising, but it'll probably drop again. Is it winter or is it actually spring? Tonight we'll take a look back at some of the activities that make winter here not such a bad thing. And we'll take a look ahead to some of the things that make the coming spring so justifiably welcome. Sit back and relax. It's Monday night and time for discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan In the UP, this time of year is a period of transition. We anxiously wait as winter slowly releases its grip and the warm days of spring sneak in. Lakes once again expose themselves and welcome back residents who have vacationed further south. Icy streams open up and again become fishable. Brookies, bass, turkey hunting, mushrooms, maple syrup, and the wonderful, wonderful sound of frogs. It's all right around the corner. But before we say goodbye to winter, we'll take a look back at some of the things that make it a special time of year. When we think of winter activities, one of the first things that comes to mind is ice fishing. There's a fish there. Oh, is this a dandy? Yep. There we go. Oh, that's a pretty one too. I just didn't want to put a gaff hook in them and kill them. We got another one up, eh? Boogie out there. We'll have this guy back in action in just a second. Yeah, 27 and a half. That little hog. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> it was ripping like a pike though. It was. We just missed about a 45 incher. Really? Broke that big. spider wire off. Austin, you're gonna have to hold on to him so it doesn't pull him down the hole. <laughs> Getting a little closer at him. Here it comes, 20 feet. They keep eating all of our lines and uh, they cut them off, they break them off. Everything we have fails to bring them in. We've caught one, here we go. Let's see if we can, oh, there we go Why again. Are you kidding me? The water wolf. Wear them out, that's all right. Giant water wolf. Yeah, wear them out. Oh my god. <laughs> Good job, guys. I didn't let him put his head past that hole no, one more no. inch than he was getting. 28. 28. On the walleye. Don't bite. Uh, about 40 and a half, yep. It's all right. A little bait and knock. A little piece of God's country. Walleyes and pike are certainly not the only fish in our waters, and a hook and a line is certainly not the only way to catch them. That's the smallest one I've got yet. <sighs> that one's stuck. Let's 
see how they can oh, powerful there. Oh, I got it. Now, there we go, there we go, and, oh, we go. If the fish aren't biting, you can always go hunting. Winter certainly doesn't stack up to fall when it comes to hunting opportunities, but there still are a few excuses to get out in the woods with a shotgun. In December, it's late season gross. And of course, you can always try your hand at predator hunting. And the sound of beagles usually means rabbit hunting. It's always an interesting day to come out and always something exciting with the dogs happens. Um, there's always, always a good time and a good laugh and someone always has stories from the past and you know that's what we enjoy about coming out here. It is a, a, a wonderful place to live and sometimes challenging but you know you got to make the best of it and I think we do a lot of that every day of our lives so. One. Of course, winter is host to a variety of other activities like downhill skiing, cross-country skiing, snowmobiling, and one of the most unique, dog sledding. regards to the weather, the first day of spring exists only on a calendar. Simply a marker to let us know what time of year we can expect the symptoms of spring. I really don't recall any specific day where I realized spring had sprung. A particular date when I put away the winter boots and heavy coat. It's simply the time of year when it's not winter anymore. One of the first signs of spring here in the UP is the familiar sight of stands of hardwoods decorated with buckets. It's maple syrup time. <music>
Longer days of warm sunlight turn ice back to water. Lakes, marshes, and swamps come alive as a choir of frogs call out in hopes of attracting a mate. In Michigan, there are 13 different species of frogs. One does not occur in the UP, that's a particular type of a toad, but the other 12 do. Our very first frog in the spring is typically something called the wood frog, and he has an interesting call. He's already quit calling for this year. He's done laying his eggs. Uh, he and his mate, his lady friends, and all of his male friends have gone back into the woods. They are wood frogs, after all. The second one that most people do recognize is a spring peeper, and I think everybody knows what a spring peeper sounds like. They do not live in these little ponds, except for a few weeks in the springtime when they're down here doing their mating call. Another type that we'll run into the eastern gray tree frogs which are the ones people occasionally see in their backyards, on their kitchen windows, maybe on the windshield of their car. Next one we're going to likely run into is uh, the leopard frog, which is a frog that most people recognize. The big square skin that blotches all over him. The one that most people would recognize instantly is the green frog. He's um, kind of a kermit frog. He makes a sound very much like the stringing of a banjo or a string, a string of a banjo being plucked. Right behind him, we might run into a mink frog, which is rather unusual in this part of the UP, but we do have them down here. And of course, the granddaddy of all of them, the bullfrog, comes out. Uh, toward the very end, usually late June or July. And in between all these, we have one toad in northern Michigan, the American Eastern American toad. Um, and he's a toad that you find in your gardens. He's either large or small. Many people have seen little baby toads hatching in July and just thousands of them on the ground at once heading away from them. Toads have a, a skin that's a little thicker than frogs so they don't have to worry about drying out quite as much as frogs do. The chorus of frogs is not the only sound that fills the springtime air. It's time to fill up the bird feeder as the quiet of winter is replaced by the songs of a multitude of birds. Plant life of all sorts begins a new year, and signs of spring can be found from the tops of the trees to the forest floor. And cutting them off. Do not disturb the mycelium. You will not have morels here next year if you rip them by the roots. I find the majority of black morels all in lowland. Early in the season, you'll find the white Morcella escalentes growing in oftentimes logged over regions that were logged two or three years ago. They'll also grow in the highlands up in the hardwoods, specifically with the elm and the ash, but that's a little bit later in the season. You can always go out and find a black morel, the conica, by Mother's Day. And when the lilacs open, you will be finding white morels. This is the Gyromichia escalente, also known commonly as a beefsteak. People have been picking these for years and they are not considered safe to eat. Nowadays, we do know that they are toxic, skull and bones, poisonous. The real key factor when you cut into an escalente versus a morel is that you will see that the stem is solid. It's not hollow like a morel is. When you cut the morel off and you cut it open, you can see that it is hollow all the way. In the hunting category, springtime means turkeys. We've been going since daylight. We heard, what, two gobbles? We've been from Bagley to Perrinville and... Yep, there's a struggle this morning. We 
through, but it's just about to call it quits and I come and check one more spot. And uh, this guy and his girlfriend are out here. So I did the turkey breakup on him. Went around and set up on him. Started calling, he gobbled three, four times. He comes strolling right down, right down through the field, right to our setup decoy. It couldn't have worked out. <laughs> yeah, before. yeah. Especially for being at noon. You know, turkeys usually, they're not that active, but if you could catch them where the hens are going to nest, like we kind of did. Got an opportunity to have this gobbler find that hen and it was actually us. There we go, baby. <laughs> he come in strutting and, oh man, there's nothing better than this turkey hunting, boy. Came out to one of, one of my favorite spots. It's just absolutely gorgeous piece of land out here. You won't ever live this stuff down. No. It's very exciting and... That's better than deer hunting, I think. <laughs> Definitely. I'm just glad you, I'm just glad you hit him. <laughs> it was a good thing I wasn't shooting because I was shaking like a leaf, boy. Oh. <laughs> Calling them in. That's awesome. <laughs> we had we worked at her today, boy. Dude, that was sweet. <laughs> boy, he looked pretty coming through there, hey. For many of us in the UP, there's one thing that should not be could not be left out of the list of things that make springtime one of the most anticipated times of the year. Fishing. Pretty much the earliest springtime fishing is on the Menominee River due to the special boundary waters regulations. After a long winter of fishing eight or ten inches of water at a time, open water, a boat, and some early season walleyes are a much welcome change of pace. Good one? Yep. <laughs> Better let it grow. Oh, me, me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is a nice fish. Not too bad, though. <laughs> nice clean fish, though. That's a good eater there. Good one? Be good. Still a nice fish, though. Nice pre spawn walleye. Go, George. Nice spring walleye on the Menominee River. It's on. I don't see it very big. I caught this here so far. Alright, Jody. Look at this. Oh, a little fatty. There's open water from the big wall. Up we go. Nice bit. All right, Mr. Park. Oh, winter, I dream of these. That's what gets me through those below zero nights. As we move further into spring, the UP brings some of the best smallmouth fishing found anywhere. Oh yes! Light bite? Fooled him. He thought he was eating a crayfish, but instead he got my wacky worm. Beautiful. River smallmouth. I got him this time. here. Hard to beat it. That is a beautiful fish. Look at that, huh? Beautiful fish on a little wacky worm. Come on up. There we go. 
I like to have jump right in the net for me. Let him go, we'll put, he can go swim right back in the shade. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That's a monster. Oh, yes. Top water smallmouth. It don't get no better than that. That is a nice fish anywhere. Top water smallmouth. Well, hopefully tonight's show was at least a little bit of an anecdote for your case of spring fever. And maybe a reminder of the fact that every season here in the UP has something great to offer. We just need to get out and enjoy it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week, right here on Upper Michigan's very own Discovering. <laughs>